All right, hey guys, we're gonna be going over questions nine through 12 on the June 2018 Algebra One Regents. For this one, we have a two-way frequency table. Um, and this would be a statistics topic, obviously. What percentage of students chose soccer as their favorite sport? So the first, we wanna find kind of how many students chose soccer, I suppose. It looks like 99. Sometimes with these tables, they have a little row that says like total and a column that says total. I guess this one make it a little bit tougher that we have to do some of this basic arithmetic first. So 99, and now out of what? How many students were in this poll? If we add up all six values here, I believe we get 250. So our ratio is 99 out of 250 students. So now the question becomes, what is that as a percent? I would recommend just simply typing in this as a division problem. Your calculator is gonna say 0.396. We can convert that to a percent by multiplying it by 100 or simply moving the decimal over twice and arriving at our answer of 39.6%. Two-way frequency tables, be careful of um, what you set as your total. Sometimes people grab the wrong values. Maybe you just grab a 58 here. Um, maybe you didn't find the correct total. So just be careful. These can be usually easier questions, but difficult to interpret what they're asking. So be careful with reading tables. All right, and in question 10, we're looking at a trinomial, and we're trying to basically factor this question. It says, can be expressed as, um, and notice they're simply just new expressions, so basically which of these is equivalent. We'll talk about some backdoor strategies for this one, but this is gonna be our standard sum product. So we're looking for two numbers that have a sum of negative 14 and a product of positive 49. In this case, since we have a negative sum and a positive product, we know it's a case where they're both negative and our numbers end up being negative seven and negative seven. That means in our, what I call double bubbles, we're gonna put an X to give us that X squared when we multiply or double distribute this out. And we're gonna plug in the numbers we just found. So correctly here, we have X minus seven times X minus seven, which is equivalently X minus seven squared. Choice one. Um, alternatives for this, Treating these like functions, typing in the original question into y equals, um, and then going through the choices and seeing what matches either by looking graphically or by looking at the tables. Um, you can always answer equivalent questions like this, hey, which expression, which equation is equivalent by utilizing the table or graph feature on your calculator. Okay, and in question 11, we're looking at a function is defined um, Isaac is asked to create one more ordered pair for this function. Which ordered pair can he add to keep it a function? So this is specifically just looking at the x values. Um, recall that a function has unique x values assigned to um, one specific output. In other words, choice four ends up being the correct answer here. Why? Um, one, two, or choice three would result in an x value having two different outputs, which would make it not a function. Choice four is okay, even though you might be saying, isn't the three there? We're allowed to have um, outputs repeat. It's the input that we wanna be um, unique and be different. For choice 12, what topic is this applying just by reading it quickly offhand? This is our favorite CTS, completing the square. I'll briefly mention at the end some alternative ways of answering this question, but this has to do with adding a number to make this a perfect trinomial. That number is going to be half of B squared. So in this case, it will be negative three squared or nine. My right-hand side is gonna be 21, not important in this problem. And now, this is where some people make a mistake. They're able to come up with a number, but what goes in the kind of bubble here, there's a few ways you could think about it, just factoring, or there's a little shortcut of simply taking half of B. So X minus three squared, we wanna make sure we're reading the question carefully. Sometimes they might flip the sign or something. They said, what is the value of P? If it's plus P, P has to be negative three. Alternatively, you could use your calculator to help you answer this question by typing in, or even simpler than that, if we plug in the choices and FOIL or box method, <clears throat> 
by squaring the binomial, we're going to see which one uh, will give us negative 6x, which obviously only choice 3 does. Three does. Um, how could the calculator be used here? Same idea with what we've talked about in the past, utilizing y equals, graphing features, and the table to kind of see what lines up. One thing that wasn't needed at all here, notice the 21 wasn't involved. Um, that might throw some people off when they're checking just because they might not see the matching. So calculator might not be the best approach here.